Coffee Chat, day 12. Grab yourself a coffee, sit down, and enjoy the vibe. So, I went to the gym today, and that's pretty much like all I've really got uh, to talk about right now. Because after I record this, I'm going to go to my grandparents, chill with them for a bit. Then I'm going to go get my dinner from the shops. And then uh, it probably going to be an early night. Well, not like an early night, but like, you know, I'm probably going to go to sleep like around the time I would normally go to sleep at. Because I'm recording this at about half to, so... By the time I come back with my dinner, probably gonna be around like five or six, six at the latest. And then once I have dinner, uh, pretty much just probably end up playing games, honestly. Like, I, there's not really much else to do once I get like this work done. Well, I mean, I still need to. I keep procrastinating working on like the longer video, but you know, like I'll get around to it. I'll, I will get around to it eventually. Actually, while I'm here, I'm just gonna write down a quick video idea I have. I was thinking about this earlier, about like the whole fatherless epidemic and you know, I wanted to make a video on it, like one of my shorter, like more advice focused videos. Well, they're not even like advice focused, advice focused anymore. They're more like, you know, just kind of little mini lectures. Alright, there we go. You know, but I was thinking about earlier, like when I was coming back from the shops after again, like a protein bar, right? And I was just thinking like, the people without fathers are going to end up becoming stronger than their fathers. You get me? Because it's like, you know, when you grow up without a father, it's like, you want to be better. And you want to be stronger in every way. And a lot of, like, for a lot of dudes my age who grew up without fathers, we ended up doing that. Like, we ended up becoming better than our fathers. At least, like, we like to think that we did. And to be fair, I, I honestly think that we did because, you know, it takes, like, you have to be a really weak and pathetic man to leave your child you get me like you have to be weak to do that a strong man would not leave his child oh. mm. i don't know why like that little bit of hair is like a little bit off but always looks like that when i tie it up so yeah, like, 
you know, it takes like a very weak man to leave his child. And I want that video to sort of bring that up and like really mention its effects and like, you know, call out if there's any like fathers who have abandoned their child watching these videos, which I, I highly doubt, but you know, just in case I'm going to call them out because you are scum of the earth if you do that. And, yeah, basically that video is going to be about how, like, you know, fatherless kids, especially fatherless sons, are becoming a lot stronger than their father. So you have that to look forward to in, like, a month. Because, like I have said... I have a lot of videos like already pre-recorded and I'm just sort of I'm doing these and then I'm uploading them. Also apology for yesterday's video where you know like the camera just sort of the footage just kind of stopped. That was just because my iPhone ran out of storage so you know. Like, I couldn't really keep going with the video. I mean, I had nothing else to say, really, and it was already, like, basically over. But, you know, I didn't get to say the classic outro. Probably gonna get chicken korma and rice for dinner. That sounds pretty lovely right now. You know, a lot of people like shit on chicken and rice. And they're like, oh, bad meal. It's, it's so gross. Like, blah, blah, blah. What? It's good. It It is really nice. Like, I really like chicken and rice. But not plain. Not, not plain chicken and rice. Plain chicken and rice is... Is, I mean, it's not disgusting, but it's, like, very bland. But you add, like, a korma sauce on that, you're, you're chilling, you're laughing. It's so nice. Or, hell, even if you just season your chicken. Like, I don't know why a lot of people, and... I don't even know if this is, like, a real thing, but a lot of people... There's, like, that stereotype around bodybuilding where it's, like... Oh, bodybuilders don't season their chicken. I, I don't think that's true. I think a lot of bodybuilders do season their chicken. Just because, like, why would you want something that plain? And, you know, like, obviously there's the entire, like, essentially eating disorder thing. But, you know, like... I feel like most bodybuilders don't really have an eating disorder. They more just struggle with body dysmorphia. I don't... Like, maybe that... I. It's a very confusing thing. I don't really like to think about it. I just like to do what I do. And just leave it at that. But... I don't know. Plain chicken and rice is bad. Well, not bad. Just m mediocre. Uh, seasoned chicken and rice is decent, and chicken curry, oh, low battery, chicken curry and korma, not chicken curry, uh, chicken and rice and korma, very good, very good. Don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow, though. Last Friday of Lent, so, you know, I can't eat meat on Fridays because of Lent and all that. So I don't really know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. I want to get something, like, at least somewhat healthy into me. Because most Fridays over the past six weeks, I've just had, like, I'll be real, I, I've just had Pringles. Which is not like a very, 
not a very healthy option to eat. And especially since it lacks, like, any protein. So I'm just, like, eating junk that isn't really recovering my muscles or making them bigger. But I guess during Lent, that's not really, like, the priority. Like, you know, bodybuilding hasn't been a priority over the past few weeks just because, like, of Lent. Which is... You know, like, I, I have, like, a different priority, obviously. But I'm excited for Lent to end so that I can really lock in on bodybuilding. And, you know, like, I'm still, obviously, I'm still going to be worshiping God and, like, you know, being a Christian. Because over the past Lent, like, I, I feel like I have grown more connected to God. Despite the fact that I failed my penance, as you can see. But, you know, like, it, it it will be how it will be, I suppose. Still gonna be going to church nearly daily. Uh, yeah. Like, I really want to grow closer to God this year. That was sort of, like, one of my goals for 2024. Like, this God and bodybuilding were, like, my three main priorities for this year. And, like, honestly, I'd say I'm doing a pretty good job on, like, at least, like, a decent job on, like, all three of them. But I could definitely be doing better. And I really want to... Like, you know, with the first three months of the year... That's when you fail your New Year's resolution. And then after the first three months... If you've at least tried to stick to it... In those first three months... After the third month, that's when you fly ahead. Like, a lot of people don't really understand that when they said New Year's resolution. That... Obviously, you're going to fail in the first three months. But are you going to stick with it? That's the question. Because you don't need to be perfect. You just need to be willing to stick through the failures until it starts getting more perfect. And then, that's when real progress is made. Like last year, I wanted to stick to like, you know, bodybuilding. Like I wanted to build a good physique last year and the first three months I was doing like fine like I was doing pretty good in January and February especially didn't like I missed three days of working out in January and February last year and then you know in March I started missing more days started missing more days and then I signed up for the gym and from there on it was just like clean sailing you know, by by summer last year, a lot of people were saying, like, I was the most jacked person they had met. Well, not the most jacked person they had met, but, like, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, I got jacked quickly. And, like, I got built quickly. And, you know, like, it's just because I stuck with it. Like, that's just the real truth. I just stuck with it. And I ended up succeeding at it because I just like I wouldn't let myself give up that's a very important skill to learn never let yourself give up make it like almost a personality trait that you don't give up be stubborn about achieving what you want to achieve and you will achieve it because failure is a part of it failure is a part of success that is like Failure and success are two sides of the same coin. You need to fail before you can succeed. And I find that not really a lot of people seem to get that. Like a lot of people will fail and they'll just like give up or slow down. Or like, you know, all that sort of stuff. Instead of just keeping their eyes on the prize and just... They, they don't keep running when no one else is. 
Like, it's easy for... When everyone else fails, they'll give up. When you fail, you keep running. You keep running when no one else is. I actually have a video about that phrase coming up. Probably in the next week or so. So yeah, I'll be able to... In that video, I'll be explaining more... Well, I have explained more about like that saying and where it came from. And, like, sort of what it means to me. So hopefully you can have it too. But, you know, like... Come up with your own sort of phrase that means something to you. You get me? Come up with your own phrase that keeps you going, like keeps you in the right headspace to achieve success. And you will achieve success because of it. Well, not because of it, but like, it will help. It will help a lot. Well, that's sort of the magic about you know, the David Goggins, who's going to carry the boat sort of thing. Because, like, you know, when you're doing anything and you start, like, repeating in your mind who's going to carry the boats, you aren't going to give up because you know that David Goggins didn't give up. So, like... Yeah, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, like, if you want success, just don't give up. And there, we have, like, a moral for this video. We have, we have something, like, for this video that you can gain value from. Well, at least, hopefully, you can gain value from it. Like, it really all depends on who's speaking and who's listening when it comes to, like, giving advice in this sort of format. When it comes to trying to, like encourage anyone it really depends on who's speaking and who's listening that's what i found at least coffee's done we'll see you in the next one keep running when no one else is